Hello everybody, how are you doing? And welcome again uh, to our another week of our online lectures on multimedia. Uh, and I hope that you had very good exam. And uh, if some of you uh, had not in you know, a good time on this exam, so please uh, prepare you know better for final exam so that everybody of you uh, get very good grades. So now uh, let's uh, start so with our this week uh, contents and we have uh, this introduction to data visualizations. Um, so you know, so data visualization um, uh, is not so precisely the contents of multimedia uh, because you know that we almost cover everything uh, for the basics uh, for data uh, for multimedia. So uh, so that means you know text, image, audio, video, and compression. Uh, and, and advanced video coding and encoding tools, frameworks, those things. Now, uh, this times, you know, I am you know, coming up with uh, some more attractive content and useful content. And because, you know, the data visualization is an integral part in, in today's uh, world, and that's in everywhere uh, we will be using, and uh, that deals with data and various, you know, kinds of information. So we need to uh, understand uh, these data visualizations because it's basically comes up with image uh, contents and, and numerical content, data contents, many things together. Okay, so let's get started. So um, uh, the contents is, you know, will be coming uh, like this, that importance of data visualizations. And then uh, we'll see some historical, you know, um, concepts uh, or key figures in of data visualizations and then we will see that what are the visualization tools that we may use and what are the selection criteria and then we have graphics data and design and um, the graphics data design maybe we'll be covering in the next part so in this part um, you know basically will be confined to the introductory part so um, uh, data visualization what is it so you see uh, the fried ban in 2018 uh, 2008 it came up with some you know broad definitions and according to these definitions uh, data visualization basically um, is a graphic representations and that expresses the importance and significance of data and that pretty good um, definition but this definition basically continues um, because you know uh, so this data visualizations this graphic representation should reveals the inside and patterns that uh, we don't usually see when we look at the raw data right uh, or in other words the data, data visualization it is not just you know you just take the raw data and present it it's also come up with you know some sort of art that this art basically um, you know through this you know we uh, we, we, we more understand about information, numbers, and various sorts of measurements associated with those numbers. So that's our kind of you know, data visualizations. Okay? Now, uh, you can come up with your own definitions. Uh, for example, you know, uh, there are some experiments like these. Uh, for example, let's say you know, some students or some people or learners or anybody, you know, they are asked to come up with you know, definitions of data visualizations. And I, I'm sure that you also have some sort of mind and idea about data visualizations, right? So can you try it, you know, write the data visualizations with your own way? But anyway, let's get sticks into this. So that, you know, so those students, they were asked that to define the data visualizations. And then, um, uh, you know, then let's say that uh, we collected all of these definitions. And then uh, let's say we make a, you know, cloud, word clouds with top 150 words. That means we collect all the definitions and we collect top 150 words and then we make a word cloud. You know, you know about word cloud, right? So word cloud means, let's say, uh, there are you know, many words and which words are you know more frequently coming and then which, are, which words are less frequently coming, that's kind of things. For example, here you see the data, this word coming more frequently, right? So that's why this data, it just looks like, you know, in a larger shape. So, and maybe information and thereafter than visual and there are still communication graphics, those are less frequently coming. So, whatever. So, if we, you know, uh, take top 150 words and we make the word clouds, so it looks like this one. And if we choose 40, top 40 words, then it looks like this one. And if you, if we choose, let's say, top 5 words, 
then the word clouds looks like this one. So now can you think about this? That you see in most of the cases, the top words that coming while using the definitions, while you know making the definition is information, visual, data, history, that kind of things. So how about you know coming up with a very you know simple definitions of data visualization like that? That this is a visual way to tell a story with the data and information. So and that's pretty fine definition. And I believe that you would agree on the definition. So now you understand what is data visualizations. You also have some mind, so we don't need a lot of technical, you know, things to understand what is data visualizations. So um, the you know, reference books that you know perhaps you know, it is good to use you know, this one, data visualization made simple, um, you know, insights into becoming visual. You know, so and there are many other books. You know, I just found this book online. Maybe you can also see that. So and there are some online references. For example, you know. Uh, some of our content that we'll be taking from here that you know you know this this link right i don't know this github and then there are you know from mit online references uh, they have a some open courseware on statistics and visualizations but there are some part of data visualizations also and also you know there are another you know this github you know resources uh, that's you know foundations and concepts regarding you know data visualization so you can see it but i believe that you know i'll be providing this lecture slide is enough uh, so yeah but uh, you should remember that data visualization itself is a very big topic so it's not you know possible to cover up those things in just you know one week or two weeks but we'll be you know uh, having some uh, theoretical background and also we'll see you know some things you know and as a demonstrations in python okay so um uh, before we go forward uh, let's uh, think about something like this data information and knowledge do you know what is the differences between them data information and knowledge perhaps right let you know let's say data so what is data data is basically you no know, look everything's you know that we are taking our knowledge data our information it's you know from our surroundings right we observe we do some research we collect some feedback so that kind of thing so those are the data so we can say that you know data is basically discrete and objective facts about you know a certain event right so that's the data so data itself you know doesn't say a lot of things so data is simply you know maybe quantifications or or whatever it is uh, but it's some fact right so this is the data but when you you know analyzed this data and find out some relationship and connections among those data then you have information right so that's why we're saying like this the data with analyzed relationship and connections basically information so in other words data itself you know doesn't make sense but when you have the data and you find out the relationship and connections then you have information and when you can contextualize that information so that your knowledge right so so that means um, uh, uh, the data and then you have information from the information you contextualize and then you get the knowledge and then based on your knowledge then you know perhaps you know uh, you grow your understanding and then experiences then you become you know you, you have some sort of you know wisdom right and, and and not only there you know there is another step forward and that's we said decision you know so uh, based on of our you know data information knowledge or based on of our knowledge you know we had some understanding and then you know we grow the wisdom and based on our wisdom we can basically you know decide something right we can do some change and whatever it is now uh, in that perspectives uh, if you see it so this data information and knowledge it's basically all about the our past right and um, the decisions that we will be taking based on this past so that we can categorize it as a future right and wisdom maybe somewhere in between now there is you know another thing you know very the same things you know but in a different way we can say that uh, let's say we have you know data and when we uh, provide the meaning of the data so meaning of this data then it become information and then when we have you know context of that informations then we get the knowledge and then when we have the insights based on that knowledge so then we have the wisdom and then when we have some purpose 
on on that wisdom so so that becomes our decision right so that's the idea anyway so he, you see so this one will be here and this one will be here maybe there is some mistake okay okay so um then why we use data visualizations that's the you know questions naturally comes now see according to the world economic forum the world produces 2.5 quintillion bytes of data every day think about quintillion what is that even even i became puzzled the 2.5 quintillion and yes you were right the one quintillion basically means you know 10 to the power 18 so think about that a lot of data and the more interestingly you know that 90 percent of this data basically has been created in last two years but before that before that it was not you know that kind of data so huge you know amount of data right and you know that we already understand from our multimedia understanding that the tremendous amount of data coming from the from various you know sources now how how to you know see that data how to you know perceive that data think about you know one data you know scenario uh, from a from a particular source like this one this data shows the number of user reviews you know of a particular products you know by day for example you know let's say 2018 and maybe i don't know maybe maybe two three four five in maybe every day or let's say in every month i don't know which is correct is a month um month year month day year or 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 day month year we don't know but let's say the per day let's say three review 27 reviews so when you look at this table what you see we can usually see one number right maybe we are particularly focusing on this you know one particular row and then we can see that at this date you know there are 12 reviews are there and then we have to you know go sequentially like this so this may be not good idea that to get all the information instantly so how about if we just you know make this table into a tabular representation i mean a very simple you know graphical representations a simple bar line chart and you see we can instantly you know have some sort of you know comparative idea that perhaps you know at this date it's more and other date is is not you know that kind of and also you know we can accommodate um, a lot in number of days from maybe day one to day 365 you know that kind of days together so we we have an idea and a perceptions about many days together right so that's a very good you know a motivation so uh, we can say the number one reason why we need the data visualizations that we like to communicate in a simple way and very quickly and rapidly and effectively now uh, uh, so what about you know other reasons so think about that you know when we do the visual display this basically combine the values into shape you remember that we have some data values and we are converting to some sort of shape for example you know line graph uh, we, what we do essentially that we we change our line you know height or something and then we see that how the reviews over time right so that 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 right now we saw that right that what is the height changing and we can perceive something or let's say any kinds of line changing so we we say the shape changes when shape changes we can understand something that our data is changing so that's a very good thing so uh, what we say that let's say the shapes might be dot lines bars shared areas bubbles so that can basically reveals you know many correlations and relationships even we can see the anomalies and patterns so so that kind of things for example here you know we have a chart this chart shows maybe this data had some relationship between you know this and that right and how about this you know data we instantly look that maybe you know this has one group of data and maybe this is outlier so uh, see this transformation of data into information so you see it was data but when we present in a graphical manner we can see the correlation we can see that there is outlier or not so that that what is that that is information right so we find out some relationship and connections so number two you know reason is or reason two is basically transform data into information now how about you know another interesting you know reason that why we need data visualizations now think about you know when we think about the big data or a lot of data 
so we uh, can perceive four dimensions so this is basically you know coming from uh, perhaps you know ibm insights so anyway so in ibm or intel i forgot it so uh, so big data they see there are four dimensions of data so one is volume of the data so that means the physically what is the size of the data maybe you know kilobyte megabyte gigabyte terabyte that kind of things and then it has a variety of data so that means you know there are uh, different forms of data right you know that and then the velocity of the data velocity is that the speed in which it is generated right so think about that when uh, we are using facebook or social media we are clicking in different kinds of ad and if we just you know collect and uh, all of this click and page reviews products so and those information basically are stored in some pages so you see within a very short time huge amount of data will be created right so and then uh, we have you know veracity now veracity means accuracy so what is the accuracy of data now when we think you know our big data into these you know kinds of you know dimensions volume variety velocity and variety veracity so so think that you know it is really very hard to cope up these dimensions so for example think that let's say we have a macbook you know or let's say desktop and then in this desktop you know we we, we like to see a, a big data so how many rows we can see at a time just in a few rows right and even um, even though let's we can uh, watch more but how about the software itself that how many you know this excel or whatever this kit can produce right and there are various other kinds of things is coming through the networks and and whatnot right so uh, definitely we need some uh, very dedicated and specific you know software suits that will handle these you know various kinds of dimensions of data and that we say data graphics right so we need uh, very specific you know aspects of data graphics so that we can you know show our findings easily our new insights easily our result easily so uh, the data graphics then will serve as a visual evidence that we can present to the our audience right you see when we present uh, data in a visual forms and you know the visual forms is not easy to dis distort right so it's a, it's a evidence also so so this is you know another reason that we you know land on so this is called you know the uh, that we, we like to show our evidence so to show the evidence so this is what we need so we find primarily three reasons why we need you know data visualizations you know the very first one if you remember that we like to communicate effectively and then we like to transform our data into information and then we like to show our evidence so that's the idea now let's um, you know uh, before we uh, start the next steps we uh, like to you know see some you know key figures in the history of data visualizations and uh, it's good to know this right it's very important and we get some motivation and 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 we can relate many other things so the, in fact the data uh, visualization idea is not new it's a very old idea so think about the map what is that map is definitely a representation of some sort of information and more appropriately geographic information and um if we uh, look back our history and evidence say that we have we had maps even for about you know 8000 years back so but uh, you know all of those you know past data visualizations was mostly about map and geographic information okay uh, recent is much more than that right now see a very uh, interesting you know dimensions of data visualizations came you know uh, you know from this guy charles joseph you know minard so so this minard uh, so uh, so he came up with some very you know interesting you know, graph like this one okay now what is this this is basically a map you know during you know france invasion of russia you know russia invaded france and at the time and you know the, the there was you know uh, and napoleon you know wanted to fight back with russia and you know that russia was supported by you know united kingdom kingdom at the time so anyway so the napoleons you know wanted to you know push russian army back and uh, so interestingly this you know you know just and, and uh, you know that i mean napoleon i mean could not 
you know do it definitely so they retreat you know so from from the moscow right so now this uh, this charles joseph what he did very interesting is he did this figure and what it exactly did you know he illustrate you know the loss of the army napoleon's army over the advance on moscow and and the following retreat so that means he displays the number of men you know in the army and their loss and their movements and the temperatures they encountered along their way while going there and coming back and perhaps this was a very great you know you know uh, statistical you know self-contained statistical informations that graph came up with so uh, so this is you know that's why very you know famous okay now the another you know uh, graph that for the data visualizations is you know that came up from you know william you know playfair and you know the William Playfair is a very famous um, uh, statistician, and he basically invented the line and bar chart. Also, he is you know credited with you know the you know area and pie chart those things. Now he published a book called the Commercial and Political Atlas. That's maybe in 1786, and that book uh, had many graphs. Uh, but this one was uh, very interesting. I mean, at that time, definitely. I mean, now maybe it's not that great, but it was very famous at the times. So, and these figures basically compare some exports from England um, and, and, and import, you know, export and import graph that what amount of, you know, uh, products are going, you know, from England and coming from, you know, let's say Denmark and Norway, you know, from, um, you know, 1700 to 780. So this was a pretty, you know, interesting things. So that's why you see this, this curves definitely it, it makes you know, a lot of sense that how export import, you know, flowing, flowing between those countries and it has some, you know, commercial and political connotation. Now, another very interesting, you know, um, figures is Florence Nightingale. And, uh, you know, we all are aware that uh, her famous work as a nursing right during a you know, war and uh, but you know she was also a data journalist very interesting and uh, she came up with these graphs we say the Florence Nightingale's coxcomb or rose diagram because this looks like you know that kind of diagram rose like diagram and you know so Florence Nightingale noticed that soldiers were dying from poor sanitations and malnutrition so what she did she tried to keep you know the records of the death tolls in the hospital and visualize the data in a continuous basis so that graph then helped to have better hospitalized conditions and ultimately uh, save some lives so this is also a very historical you know um, figure now uh, before we leave uh, another very interesting and key figures in the history that you know uh, came from hans rosling now, Hans Rosling's, you know, um, so uh, shows the trends of the, you know, some sort of, you know, data, you know, all over the country, you know, especially a comparative scenario between, you know, developed country and the developing countries, um, and then makes predictions, you know, using that uh, very beautiful and stunning visualizations uh, graph like bubble chart, you know, bubble chart, I like bubble chart. So, um, so these charts is basically you know world health charts by the way okay world health chart and you see uh, you can also you know search and, and understand this one but quickly I'm saying that these charts say that you know uh, that as you go to the right side it basically shows that how rich a country is and if you go to the left uh, it shows that how you know poor uh, their country is definitely and in the vertically if you go up it means that how healthy or healthcare situations in that country and if you go uh, in, the, uh, in the you know vertically down so it means the sick so that means the opposite of the healthy people right it's very interesting so you, you choose as you go to the right side maybe this country as you go to the left side you know maybe economically you know developing country and as you go to the up it basically you know healthy and if you go to the down is basically you know downwards that means the you know, sick people are, are not healthy, we had say. Now, can you find your country and then you can see that wh where the, you know, status going on? So at least you can see the nearby country and you can compare, right? So, and uh, very interesting, you see that, you know, um, uh, so it, 
you know, with one very, you know, chart, so on a very single chart, it basically give all of this information is a very stunning diagram. And this, you know, Hans Rosling also, you know, it, it is good to say here that he came up with some sort of, you know, predictions that, you know, that let's say India and China, you know, will be the global leaders in income and as well as healthcare by this 2048. And it seems that, you know, these predictions uh, is, you know, really, you know, working, you know, towards, okay. So you can, you, know, you can read, you know, more of uh, from yourself. So these are some of these, you know, key figures in the history of the data visualizations. Now, uh, what kind of, you know, visualization tools that uh, we'll be using? So, or which software, you know, we should use to build our data graphics. So, um, uh, I don't know. So, oh, okay. Uh, I thought I had some problem, but it's fine. Uh, look, you know, we have, you know, some uh, basic, you know, productivity applications. So that means the common productivity tools are, you know, good enough for most visualization tasks. So, I mean, productivity applications means that we use in every day. For example, you know, Microsoft Excel. And, and this is good for, you know, charts like, you know, basic charts like bar, you know, line, scatter plots. And even we can uh, also come up with uh, more advanced, uh, you know, charts like stacked area and radar, radar charts. Uh, for example, you know, uh, this one basically, you know, this radar chart, you know, come up with the Microsoft Excel. It's very interesting. And it says that, you know, number of bicycle rentals, you know, uh, you know, in, in different phases. For example, you know, number of bicycle, you know, rentals, you know, reaches a high in July, and then the lows in the August and September when hurricane season comes on, right? And you see, this is radar chart. You know, the very this one is the, you know, it may be the maybe the high, right? So you can see that. And this is one, and, and not, not not that one. So this is basically means all rental, right? This one represent all rental. And this one may be, you know, registered rental, and this is maybe, you know, casual rental is this one. So this radar charts basically, you know, provides you very instant and very attractive visualization tool. So even we can do that in Microsoft using Microsoft Excel. Then we have, you know, maybe, you know, let's say Google charts, you know, Google products is always very uh, easy to use. And that's are even, even interactive and web based, you know, tools. So these are, you know, very simple, you know, application software that we can readily use. But how about, you know, uh, the visualization software? The visualization software is, you know, uh, the more, you know, that means software means, you know, the very powerful and even commercial um, and and we can do a lot of things in a very easily, right? So that's, uh, that's then. So these are, you know, simple application softwares, but it's still, you know, we can use uh, very basic things. But then, you know, more um, commercialized and uh, versatile and uh, very powerful softwares is, you know, we say, let's say visualization software. And very powerful and most popular visualization software is basically, you know, Tableau, right? You know, the Tableau is very popular and uh, is very simple to use and it can handle a lot of data, there's large data and in fact, big data uh, because it can uh, integrate and it can uh, interface it can provide the interfaces with in you know, a mysql hadoop and even amazon you know web service and uh, its main competitor is basically click view now click view is also good and uh, it, it's is is great right uh, because it's also powerful uh, now when it comes this you know uh, a Tableau, so Tableau has, you know, various kinds of, you know, version like Tableau, you know, desktops, online, server, reader, publics, many kinds of things. And, you know, if you really use it, you will see many things we can done very easily within Tableau. And then, I mean, uh, as a computer science students, we can use those, you know, commercialized software definitely, but, you know, we are more interested to see something, you know, from creation perspectives, right? You know that. So... Um, even though we'll be uh, not be master on that, but if you know basic on this, so then later on you can develop yourselves if you're interested. Now, by the way, I mean I can say you know just one thing, 
that forget about you know creation and programming from by yourself if you can just you know be master on this you know even a simple commercial software like you know this tableau so that means tableau is just you take the data and just you you, you just you know present it you know this tableau you know has even the even its own certification so if you if you know that how to use tableau and if you can have a, some sort of certifications on that you can actually basically you know get a lot of jobs and that will be no problem of your earning okay so i just said i mean th this is good to say that at least okay so uh, let's say from you know programming you know package you know definitely we'll be focusing on python and uh, other than python definitely there are r r studio java those things but let's say we stick on python data visualizations now the very you know early you know software library for uh, python is basically you know for data visualization is basically matplot library and uh, because this matplot library was the first many other libraries that uh, came later on definitely those all are built on most of them are built on you know on top of this matplot library so that means you know they used the library you know and functionalities of matplot library and then they came up with easier and uh, some easy interfaces uh, so so that's why you know matplot library is good even uh, if you remember that uh, um, you know we used in python this matplot library for plotting something but then matplot library is always the basic and now on top of that we'll be you know coming up with maybe like c or maybe like you know maybe pyplot you know lib so those kind of things so, for example, the Seaborn. The Seaborn basically uh, it basically extracts and utilizes and exploits the power of matplotlib itself. And the key differences uh, with the Seaborn is that the Seaborn comes up with its very default styles and beautiful color palette. Okay. So, and you see, so this color and palette is a multimedia issue. So, anyway, so uh, it works on matplot library. So, to use that to use seaborn we need matplot library and then we have you know let's say ggplot now ggplot is also based you know it's basically based on ggplot2 and uh, if you are curious that what is ggplot2 it is basically a plotting system used in r software okay uh, so it, it that's why it is a little bit different um, you know uh, so that means r like r plotting you know, r is basically very good uh, visualization tools and so in r we use ggplot2 but you know to take some of the advantages of r you know features r capability then you know this you know python library comes that is called ggplot and uh, we can use it uh, uh, something you know when we need then we have you know pygal you know pygal is also good uh, but you know it's is is a different uh, sharing you know features so distinguishing features is basically it is basically interactive plots and we can embed that in the web browser so we we produce the you know graph using pygal and then we can you know put in the website and um, it has a good ability you know to provide the output chart as like you know something like you know vector graphics and you know this is called scalable vector graphics and um uh, but it's not always so great uh, if we work with a smaller data set it's it is good but if the data set is larger then it becomes very sluggish so for the very large data set you know pygal to produce this svc might not be good then we also have you know uh, plotly you know, plotly or plotly is also you know a, a very good uh, uh, data visualizations and programming package and this is good for you know online platforms right so so th that's the idea and definitely we can uh, have the you know, interactive plot but um, and then then it has some spatial you know uh, offers also so that basically you know contour plot and 3d charts uh, that contour plots and 3d charts sometimes are not available in you know, many other you know programming packages then we have you know something called you know geoplot library and geoplot library is basically you know uh, used for creating maps uh, and plotting you know geographical data right so it means we can create you know many you know uh, graphs like map and 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 heat maps we'll see what are those things you know you know when you do even you will produce some of these uh, things 
So, uh, so anyway, so it, it is, you know, so nonetheless, you see, this is most, you know, Python data visualization library done over maps. So it's basically nice to have library dedicated, uh, you know, solely for, for this, right? So, you know, yeah, it's good. Now, uh, let's, we, you know, talk, you know, something called, you know, these uh, things that, uh, what are the criteria for, you know, selecting so uh, okay good that after this will be you know stop in in this parts video so what are the criteria for selecting you know tools uh, to build you know data graphics now very fast things that we need to see uh, definitely is you see these are uh, our all of the things the sharing and so that means we have seven let's say you know in a micro and granular le granular level or features level we can have let's say we will be talking something like you know we'll be selecting based on sharing features so and then output interoperability and display types and data exploration simplicity and persistence now what is mean sharing the sharing means you know we'll we will create a you know visualization or, or a graph or, or something and we like to share with others and uh, to view even you know they might edit you know for example collaborative editing so we, we like to see that we can share our graphics on our, our visualizations with others or and they can share it or not so if we if we have that kind of you know uh, features uh, from a of a of a visualization tool definitely um, we are gonna choose and we're gonna select it so it means one of the features and then uh, how about the output capability can we publish this visualization to the web for example, you know, maybe interactive or maybe embedded in the wave or, or something, or maybe some in other places. We have to see that what are the output capabilities, right? And uh, so how about the interoperability? So, and it, when comes the output, you know, it also means that, you know, how about, you know, um, you know, even, even compatible, right? With, with your different kind of other systems, with other people's systems. And that's, you know, very much, you know, another features called interoperability that how easily we can connect to other data sources. So what it means is, let's say, uh, after we produce our data, let's say uh, some sort of graphics data, can we, uh, can we export uh, that, uh, that graphs or visualizations with different formats like, you know, XLX or let's say PMP or maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe there are other kinds of, you know, uh, extension right file formats if we can do so that means we can better um, you know do the compatibility with uh, one uh, system to another system so or one software to another you know software interfaces then how about the you know types of visualizations uh, as uh, as i you know told you for example you know let's say maps or network types visualizations might might not be available in every tool so we need to see that uh, what are the display types that we can have and then uh, how about the exploration now exploration means let's say we'll explore the data and we'll present it visually so that means some sort of you know analytical ability you know maybe that tools we have it or, or, or not and then the simplicity is always a very you know expected things and desirable things that how quickly we can create our charts and graphs so that's the called simplicity and then we have something like you know persistence so that means think about that if we like to we have you know we generated and we created some visualizations using some sort of you know software tools and let's say later on we like to revise it now how about you know maybe revise is not possible or let's say revise is possible but that software tools is not available anymore so uh, we have to be you know consistent and, and persistent right that that let's say we uh, you know purchase a software we do, or, or we produce you know some you know visualization from a specific you know software or, or you know company or vendor and then we see that they are not coming up not they are not in the market anymore or or it is if in, if it is open source so that's not uh, active anymore so it's not good right so we have to think about persistence uh, capability also so these are you know some you know seven criteria that we like to you know uh, have for evaluating you know you know software capability for visualizing data okay now 
there is another you know very interesting you know you know take home note you know from this slide so that is called um, you know uh, let's say less is always effective attractive and impactive so these principles basically you know came up from a company they are you know very good in some sort of you know quantization you know uh, yeah quantification um, you know consultancy so the company name perhaps you know dark horse or something like canadian company so anyway so they you know their visualizations all of the tools and they produce is based on this concept like you know they are always comes up with you know they use let's say lace ink you know uh, and then less is always effect effective and even attractive and even impactive so we will uh, use all our lace as much as possible as less as possible okay so we will see something more on on next part regarding the design perspectives and data perspectives so i hope that you uh, enjoyed this part so uh, so mainly we covered like this right it's that importance of data visualizations and that means uh, what is data visualizations why need it and what are the key figures what are the data visualization tools and what are the selection you know criteria so in next part we'll see what are the different kinds of you know graphics or data visualizations uh, we might be interested in and what are the some you know design perspective and principles and in the next week we'll see some you know practical you know things okay so um i'll see you in next part